here's something that might surprise some of you on my channel. I don't think being a conservative has to be a bad thing. I don't think it necessarily makes you racist or a bad person. I don't even think that it necessarily makes you dumb or ill-informed. There are, in fact, understandable reasons why people vote conservatively. Like, hey, maybe some of you feel more secure in certain job sectors, like with fracking or whatever. Now, I don't think Biden actually threatens those jobs, but he is rhetorically more wishy-washy about it. So I get it. Or, hey, here's one, maybe you're really rich and you just like the tax cuts. You know, you don't want to pay more tax, you're voting in your self-interest. I understand that. Or maybe abortion and gun rights is super important to you and you believe in traditional religious family values. Maybe you think that overall leads to a happier, better functioning society. Now, obviously I disagree with almost everything there. But I can understand those beliefs and I think there is genuine room for discussion there, more than people uh, give it credit for. What I don't like is when conservatives and especially conservative pundits and personalities lie about why they're wo voting a certain way. If you're not voting for one of those aforementioned reasons, you're either grossly misinformed or lying. The thing I really hate is when someone tries to uh, tap into this narrative that says, Oh, I'm, I'm actually a liberal, but I voted for Trump because the left started going crazy. So this is people like Dave Rubin, people like Tim Pool. These people are intentionally dishonest, but I think they do that thing to give themselves like an air of credibility or relatability, maybe something like that. I've come to believe that rarely do people actually push you to opposing political beliefs because they're crazy or whatever. I used to think that was a rampant thing that SJWs make people right wing. I think that can be a thing. But these days, instead, I actually think most of the time, people just naturally reveal who they are and what they really believe. You don't come to like Republicans and their policies because the Democrats supposedly went crazy. You just like Republicans, but you don't want to own it. The quartering is one of the most shameless, blatant abusers of this mindset. Uh, let's, let's quickly look, take a look at this tweet, okay? New video, please share. I've always considered myself a liberal, pro-choice, supports LGBTQ plus rights, tree hugger and anti-censorship. Thing is, I guess that's not what a liberal is anymore. I voted for Donald Trump and here is why. Okay, if you consider yourself pro-choice, it doesn't really make sense to vote Trump. His statements on the matter have been shaky and inconsistent at best. And at worst, you can pretty easily interpret it as uh, him attacking a woman's right to choose. As a President Trump, if a bill came to your desk that would defund Planned Parenthood, you would support that? You would sign that? Yes, because as long as they do the abortion, I am not for funding Planned Parenthood. You're, do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. His Supreme Court appointees we know to be pro-life. So if being pro-choice is important to you at all uh, as a policy position, then you don't vote Trump when Biden is much clearer on the matter. So I don't know why he has that in his tweet, other than he wants to give credibility to this fake idea that he's a liberal. Okay, let's move on to supports LGBTQ plus rights. Well, certainly not the T part of that can't be very important to you, because Trump banned transgender people from the military. You know, pretty blatant discrimination, unequal treatment, trampling of rights, you know, literally cost a bunch of people their job. He also signed an executive order that makes it easier to discriminate against LGBT employees. Okay, now swiftly moving on to tree hugger. Now, this is particularly laughable, because Trump doesn't even believe in climate change. He calls it a Chinese hoax. Further on, in terms of policy, not only is he doing nothing to combat climate change, he's actually accelerating towards potential destruction. The Republican Party is probably the worst party in any first world developed nation in terms of uh, addressing climate change. I mean, th if this is an issue that's important to you at all, you'd have voted for Biden, who has a detailed $2 trillion plan to help fight it. So clearly, again, it's not actually that important to him. So why have it there on your tweet? pretending as though it's a supposed value that you hold. Ooh, and being anti-censorship is important too. Well, let's see. Trump has literally called on the NFL to fire, to fire Colin Kaepernick for kneeling, constantly attacks the free press, calls them the enemies of the people for saying stuff he doesn't like, wants to open up libel laws to make it easier to sue them for saying stuff he doesn't like, said people who burn flags should be jailed. Oh, and literally one wants to censor the most important voice people have by discounting their votes, literally questioning the very foundations of democratic expression. And it's not a one-off thing. You know, everyone knew this would happen. It has nothing to do with mail-ins. He would have done this regardless, and I know that because he alluded to it four years ago. You have been warning at re rallies recently that this election is rigged and that Hillary Clinton is in the process of trying to steal it. I want to ask you here on the stage tonight, do you make the same commitment that you will absolutely, sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election? I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. If you look at your voter rolls, you will see...
Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this guy is very pro-censorship. See, I don't think that the mainstream media is free speech either because it's so crooked, it's so dishonest. So to me, free speech is not when you see something good and then you purposely write bad. To me, that's very dangerous speech. Listen, I don't want to take the quartering out of context or misrepresent his video by just looking at a tweet. So let's quickly go to the actual video and see if there's anything else in there. In fact, I'm pretty liberal. Uh, I'm a pro-choice guy uh, and um, I'm pro-LGBTQ rights, The you know, the right to marry and, and have all the same benefits any other married couple will have. Um, I, I'm pro-environment. And, and these are the core tenets. These were the tent poles of liberalism when I grew up. Okay, so we went through all that through the tweet already. He's sticking with the story that those things are important to him. And kudos to him for that. I've never seen anyone so blatant and shameless in how much they bullshit. I thought, you know, given everything that I've talked about on this channel, uh, I would let you know what were some of the core tenets uh, that led me to vote, you know, that were driving me on election day. Okay. Uh, quite frankly, tech censorship. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay, so uh, the jig is up. He doesn't really care about those other things, or certainly he doesn't care about them more than so-called tech censorship. So you're a single issue voter then. And that single issue seems to be Twitter bans. God. Okay, now this really surprises me because he voted Trump in 2016. I don't think anything remotely to do with tech censorship was on people's agenda back then. So what was your single issue back then? Hmm, it really makes you think, huh? Also, I'm curious why he thinks Trump would be better on that front. Anyway, let's uh, let's hear him out. Tech censorship uh, is a big one for me. Censorship in and of itself used to be a liberal issue. Uh, apparently, now it isn't. In 2020, I feel like the Democratic Party doesn't care about protecting our, our free speech and our, our personal liberties as much as they once did. So tech censorship is a very, very important thing to me. And with um, a Joe Biden, Kamala Harris uh, ticket, I believe strongly that we are going to see a massive increase in the uh, censorious nature of big tech. Um, so to ask the age old question, based on what mate? Newsflash, Joe Biden doesn't and will not moderate Twitter. How Twitter enforces their terms of service has nothing to do with whether or not a Democrat is in power. Now, unless some massive legislative reforms happen, the, the president doesn't have a lot of say how these private companies moderate their platform. They will run unopposed for a period of four to eight years, ramping up the removal of wrong thinkers, deplatforming people, taking away YouTube channels' abilities to make a living by removing monetization. These are very real issues right now that are going to get exceedingly worse, and it will get worse at a more rapid rate now that big tech doesn't have to worry about anything anymore. They haven't really had to worry for the last four years though. They can just go about their business and get even more out of control. This is going to give carte blanche to Silicon Valley over the next four years to just do as they see fit. We're basically seeing a point now where Twitter's just basically openly censoring the president of the United States every tweet. Okay, so right here, the quartering just demolishes his own argument. Clearly, who's president doesn't really seem to matter, right? If this current horrible censorship is, hap is happening under a Trump presidency to the point where Trump himself is getting censored, it kind of seems like these companies can ban or censor or do whatever they want to anyway. These private companies can moderate as they see fit. The president has no influence over it unless there are massive legislative measures on the way. So your supposed grievances has nothing to do with who's in office, it's to do with Twitter or Facebook or YouTube cracking down on certain things. These people all want what we have, independent creators have. They want our audience and they're not gonna earn it. They're going to take it, they're going to steal it. And without immediate section 230 reform, it's going to be so easy. I don't like to do the doom and gloom thing, but understand that section 230 needed to be fixed. I'm so angry that Republicans did nothing about Section 230 while in their uh, during their time in power. So a couple of things, that's not true. They actually did try to. So Trump issued an executive order um, that tried to curb the legal protection offered by Section 230. Oh, for anyone who doesn't know, Section 230 essentially uh, grants that the social media platforms uh, aren't treated as publishers of content that their users post. And as such, they aren't gonna be held liable for whatever uh, their users might be might post. So if I write something that's defamatory on Twitter, and Twitter can't be held liable for that, but I can be. Now, there are limits to these protections, and actually what it also does is uh, protect these platforms' ability to moderate or you know, delete pornography or whatever without then being held liable as a publisher. But anyway, that's the gist of it. 
Suffice to say, without those protections, uh, the social media companies as we know them today wouldn't really exist. So Trump's proposition to reform Section 230 um, was complete uh, nonsense. Um, there's a good article uh, on the matter by a professor of law at uh, University of Arizona about it. Trump's proposals would essentially ensure more censorship, and it means the average person will have less of an outlet for their opinions and would make these social media companies a lot more liable, which basically threatens their existence and as such threatens your channel's existence. Okay, now this surprisingly actually has so many layers of hilarity, of comedy to it. He's wrong in so many different directions. Okay, let me ra try and wrap my head through this. So firstly, you're complaining that mainstream media and these tech companies are going after independent creators, which they're not. They're going after blatant misinformation. But anyway, you're scared it'll get worse under Biden because he won't do enough about Section 230. And it's funny because Biden actually wants Section 230 repealed as well. That's actually one of the only things that Trump and Biden seem to agree on. So actually, now there's even less reason for you to vote Trump. Also, I don't know why you'd think Section 230 reform would help you. Maybe the way Biden aims to implement it might? Who knows if his reforms would be more nuanced. Certainly Trump's propositions was just a joke, and it would probably kill channels like yours, to be honest. Uh, I'm mostly libertarian. This is how you really know Jeremy's just making shit up. Libertarians don't want governments messing around with private entities such as social media platforms. Also, where's the free market answer to all this conservative censorship? Why aren't there conservative versions of Twitter that thrive? And also, Trump is not libertarian at all. He's protectionist. Actually, what he is is scatterbrained, but he has a lot of protectionist policies. Trade wars, tariffs, building walls. These are not libertarian ideals, but go off, King. Look, my channel has completely stagnated now uh, after this latest algorithm update. Why do you think that is? It is a scary, slippery time right now to be a truth speaker. Damn, I should have put more respect on Pulitzer Prize winning Jeremy from the quartering. It is an undeniable fact that they took what was clearly a beautiful woman, turned her into what can only be described as a 13-year-old boy. Keep speaking your truth, brother. Fight the power. Okay, now with all this, I hope that I've demonstrated that the quartering just wanted to vote Trump. And he's making up reasons for it. Yep. Just the same as Trump was always going to call losing the election rigged. He's just grasping at straws to justify his position. Jeremy from The Quartering, just like Tim Pool, just like Dave Rubin, is a malicious liar. He is conservative for some reasons, maybe even understandable reasons. Like the ones I mentioned at the start of the video. But he is too cowardly to own those positions. None of these people are really disaffected liberals, okay? They are conservatives who hope that by lying and pretending to hold values that they don't actually care about, that they can build a stupid audience that thinks they are impartial. If you're one of the few people who lean conservative on my channel, that's fine, honestly. But just don't listen to people like this. Cowards who are taking you for a ride. They think you are idiots. I'm sure of it. They think their own fans are idiots. If those weren't mistakes he made, they're lies. Remember that. Either that or they're all like unbelievably stupid and ill-informed. Like levels of stupidity that it wouldn't make sense that they are able to operate a keyboard, right? And sadly, I don't think they're quite that dumb. Here's the truth. People like the quartering are going to be crying about censorship forever, no matter what, because he is a perpetual professional victim. Remember that in every video that he talks about censorship or about being silenced. He makes an ungodly amount of money spouting this shit. He taps into that same paranoia that Fox News has tapped into for years. You know, it's the same thing with a different skin on. You know, they always play themselves as the little guy, you know, the ones fighting against power, how there's bias and censorship everywhere else, big tech, big this. It's a load of bullshit. Nothing is going to happen to the Quarterings channel, I guarantee you that. Or Tim Pool's. No matter how much he fear mongers you into thinking that they're all, go they're all going to be insta-deleted. Rarely do people actually get banned or censored unless they do something super messed up or blatantly go against the terms of service. I mean, recently the Coping MAGA Twitter account, basically an account dedicated to shitting on Trumpists freaking out after the election, they got suspended. I'm not going to baselessly call that censorship of left-wing content. I don't know whether they did something bad or not. I do share the concerns that, you know, there's a few social media platforms that hold an inordinate amount of power and influence, you know, depending on how they moderate, they can really shape things. Despite that, as of right now, I'd say across most of these platforms, uh, their terms of service and community guidelines are uh, applied pretty consistently. You can be a conservative online very easily. I'd say 99% of people can freely discuss their values. You can talk about family values, cultural issues, media, immigration policy, taxes. Now, I don't think that if you 
you tweet out something like, oh, I think we need to lower taxes and have less immigrants coming in, that Twitter is going to suddenly ban you, right? That's not going to happen. Now, I think Tim Pool last month got like 17 million views on just one channel of his. I think you guys are doing okay. However, I think conservatives feel more attacked online because there are a couple of very specific things that they seem to do more often than people on the left might. And that sometimes gets them in trouble. Now, firstly, spreading unsubstantiated conspiracies about huge issues that are time sensitive and that concern public health or uh, public welfare in some way. So stuff about COVID or the election, you know, making massive baseless claims that can uh, get, get viral, that might genuinely lead to people dying or whatever. That's not great, right? That seems to be more of a thing on the far right than on the left. Secondly, just saying like super racist or bigoted shit, you know, just don't be super blatant about it, you know? You can dog whistle so easily and get away with it on these platforms. Just don't say stuff about how like certain races can't function in a democracy or about how a cabal of X group control everything. Don't do those things, you'll be all right. Okay, and finally, I want to talk about some of the bogus theories around this election. To anyone watching who uh, might have stumbled in here and who may have legitimately thought that something shifty and untoward has gone on, apart from the fact that everything has been completely debunked. Consider this, a conspiracy of that magnitude to misappropriate what thousands if not millions of votes, depending on what the accusations are, that would require the cooperation of so many people, right? Think about the amount of people that would have had to have played a part in this. Think about the amount of people who would have known about it and had to have remained silent. We're not just talking about one or two bad actors, right? They couldn't have done, rigged anything to a significant degree. We're talking about a lot more people here. There would just be so many moving parts trying to get it all done in the right places. And now keeping something of that magnitude quiet uh, is I'm gonna say impossible, right? And to what end? Why would all the credible media refuse to acknowledge this reality? Well, they're part of the democratic establishment, you see. Well, they're not, you know, like uh, networks like CNN and, MSN and MSNBC do have a bias, but they're not towards the Democrats, they're towards sensationalism. Whatever will sell. The media loves reporting on big, scary things. That's what they live for. If there was a crazy rigging grand conspiracy, they would be scrambling to find evidence for it, to report on it. Whoever gets that scoop first would bank so much. It's just not there. So consider what's more likely. Maybe the con man, shitty business person who has laid the seeds of doubt about the validity of this election for months, actually no, for years at this point. The guy who lies and lies and lies. This person who is potentially in very serious legal trouble as soon as they're out of office. That maybe, just maybe, he lied again, you know? When everything's said and done in a few months time and you know, all the legal proceedings and Biden takes the White House, I don't know what all the people who bought into this nonsense will do. You know, do they just continue their lives like nothing happened? <laughs> like that guy yelling how he just calmly walks away when it's all done. I'm trying to never steal this election. Let me just cover it up. We want our freedom for the world. It was our freedom to Biden. And Biden's covering up this election. He's stealing it. Or do these people just keep believing that something crazy has gone on and the election was stolen? And it's actually funny the difference between how Trump and um, some of his staff and family um, behave in front of the media and how his legal team is actually proceeding. There's a stark contrast there. I guess the idea was never to actually try and win. It was just to poison the well, make it seem like there's something untoward going on. Just keep filing lawsuit after lawsuit. But yeah, as I was saying, these theories are really frustrating because they often seem to stem from people just having no idea about how certain systems in the world work. And they don't care to try and find out. If something is beyond their comprehension, they just grasp at these bullshit theories because everything must be as simple and as dumb as they are, I guess. Anyway. Alright, I'm done. Uh, I'll probably make another video very soon. Maybe about an entertainment product like a game or a movie. Uh, press all the buttons, smash the bell. Oh, go follow my Twitter. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Peace.